All right, welcome movement specialists to another episode of Triplane Function, where we're going to take a muscle, make it relevant to you, so that you can see it, so you can feel it, so you can move it, and so that you can teach it. Today, we're going to be doing your latissimus dorsi, also known as your lat. So the first thing I want you to do with your TheraBand, tie a loop in it on one end. You can leave the other end free, doesn't really matter. If you need to, go ahead and pause the video right now, tie a loop in it. All right, once you've tied the loop in it, I want you to push it all the way up your right arm. The goal of this video is not only so that you can see the muscle, but more importantly, to feel it. This is where this TheraBand comes in. You can look on a piece of paper in an in a anatomy atlas, all you want to see muscles, but can you really feel it? The goal of this TheraBand is so that it's going to really simulate how this lat actually moves. And as you soon see, how it moves in all three planes of motion. So you get a really rough idea when you move this TheraBand that you'll feel that underlying lat do exactly the same thing as that TheraBand is doing. That way you can really feel it. All right, so Steve took this all the way up to the top part of his shoulder, and this is going to be attachment between the greater and lesser tubercle of the humerus. This is a pretty good anatomic location of where this lat is attached. When someone has tight lats, it rolls forward. We know this whenever people try to maybe elevate their arms. They can only get so high because this lat is too tight. That can lead to a lot of issues with the front of the shoulder, impingement, rotator cuff syndrome, even things going downstream to the elbow or wrist. Looking at where this lat attaches here, you can see how it drives forward. Okay, the other attachment here, so that you can really feel how it works, I'm gonna fan this out, go ahead, Steve, so start to turn around for me. And go ahead and grab it low. Right here. Most, the bulk of the lat muscle actually attaches to your low back. This lat muscle is huge. This TheraBand is quite puny but you'll still get a good feel of what the lat actually does. This lat actually attaches to this iliac crest right here at his short line, even to his sacrum, even through his entire lumbar spine, and even some of his ribs, and even all the way there's a loose little attachment onto this scapula, the inferior angle right here, the shoulder blade. So if you were to take a look, this lat would be a large, large portion of this low back. What happens whenever this part gets a little bit tight, a little bit aggravated, this could be your common low back strain. A lot of people think low back strains might be the deeper muscles, the multifidi, the erector spinae that really extend your back. That could be very well true. Are you paying attention to this lat? Could that low back strain really be a lat strain right here in this low back? So Steve, what is the lat commonly known for? Lat pull down pull ups. Lat pull down. So, see, we're going to simulate lat pull down. He starts here, and he's going to end right here. And you can see that the, that lat pull down does concentrically pull those muscles together. This is now a lot looser than where it began. That is a great exercise to concentrically activate the lats. But is that all the lats should do? Concentrically activate, or does it do more? Now, if you watch a lot of our videos by now, you know that the lat does a whole lot more than just concentrically activate in just one plane of motion. It is triplane and it is a very eccentric muscle to control where your body is moving. So, let's talk about first how the lat moves as in relation to where it attaches to the shoulder. In order to stretch this out, in the sagittal plane, you can get some shoulder flexion. Lift your right arm up in the air. Hold firm down here. If you don't feel it, choke up on this, pull it down a little bit more so you can feel this whole entire TheraBand stretch out. If you really pay attention to the underlying lat, you might be feeling as well. So in the sagittal plane, you get some lengthening of the lat here. In the frontal plane, the AB ducts, which is over his head right here, you can also see that this TheraBand is getting tighter. So is the lat. External rotation of the humerus also gets a lot of that lat too, since it is a um, since whenever you concentrically activate, it's an internal rotator. You might already know that. So an external rotation, it's going to lengthen that. What some people don't appreciate is this attachment to the scapula. 
we need horizontal adduction right here in order to get this lengthening, get this shoulder blade away, get this lengthening. If you do this at home, you will feel this stretch your arm out even better. It's even better not only horizontal adducting here, go palm up. This will externally rotate that humerus. You will feel a little bit more length from that lat. So that's how we will elongate the lat in those three planes of motion. From here, that's only half the story. We haven't even talked about how you elongate the lat from where it attaches to the pelvis and the lumbar spine and ribs in the sagittal plane. Let's go ahead and take a step forward with your left foot for me, Steve. Perfect. And as he's taking a step forward, his, his pelvis is going to be posteriorly rotating here. You can see that as, his, as he posteriorly rotates, that iliac press is going to be driven downwards. That will give a little bit of a stretch to this bottom part of the lat. Okay, so you go ahead and step back normal. Let's do a left foot lateral lunge. In the frontal plane, you can see that this will be elongated lat. He's bringing his hips away, especially if he keeps his chest where it was, just moving the hips towards the left, moving that pelvis towards the left. You will feel, and you can even see in this video right here, how this TheraBand gets lengthened out a little bit more. And lastly, Steve must do a left foot opposite rotational lunge here. And you can see as he's twisting away here, he's bringing, he's swinging his pelvis around to even get more length. What does this have to do about the lat in this position? Well, your lat needs to eccentrically control these motions. So think about that for your pivoting athletes, for even your sprinters, anyone that does a lot of this transverse plane motion. Is this lat helping? If you don't quite believe me, let me show you how to make a, a really effective lat stretch. Steve, how do you stretch your lat? How do normal people, how do typical people stretch their lats? I usually go home, open up the cupboard, reach for the top cupboard, grab, I kind of just bend down, lean forward, and try to stretch. And do you feel that in your lat? A little bit, so, kind of. Depending on how tight you are, this might be a good starting stretch where Steve is getting this shoulder flexion as he's bending forward. He might even be getting some of this tilt of this pelvis here to where he's getting that, um, that elongation. Not a bad place to start, but just by going over what we went through to elongate that lat from here and elongate that lat from here, let's combine a lot of those motions. So Steve, instead, let's go ahead and grab over here. If you're doing this at home, please go to your um, door frame. We're in a cage right here. Nothing too fancy about it. You have a door frame that you can do this on. And <clears throat> whenever you're holding on, go ahead and grab with your at least your thumb up. If you have a cover like Steve likes you, if you can grab underhand, you even might feel it a little bit better. Through this, you will see that we're getting some flexion of his shoulder. We're getting some abduction of his shoulder, horizontal abduction and external rotation. Exactly what we just talked about. This top part of the lat is starting to get really lengthened up. Do you feel this at all in this lat? See? Yes. Do you feel it more than what you were just doing up there? Yes. I hope at home you will feel this a whole lot more too. This is only half the story. This is the beauty of knowing how the lat attaches here as well as here. Steve, take a step backwards with this right foot. And go ahead and load even more pressure through it. Really butt out. You can see with this, he is starting to get some of that pelvic, and do me a pelvic tilt here, Steve. In the sagittal plane, he's even getting more length here. By rotating his pelvis, he's dialing himself up in the transverse plane. And if I'm a little bit mean to him, get a little bit better stretch by having him go all the way over here. Steve, what do you feel here? Pretty big stretch. Pretty big stretch. He has tight lats. He is, he is bailing out right here. I hope you feel this just as much. I will go ahead and relax, Steve. All right, good job. Good job. So here at Triplane Function, we're not just about taking a stretch and just doing it the good old-fashioned way in one single plane. No, we do a lot more than that, where we take that muscle, where we can move it through all three planes to dial it up so you can get an effective stretch. 
I hope that by watching this video, not only could you see where the lap was attached with this thinner band, but with this thinner band's help, you could feel that underlying lap muscle really stretch out by moving it. Now go and teach it, not only to your body, show a friend, show a patient, show a client, spread the word. Thanks for joining us on Tri-Plane Function. We'll see you next time.